peptide that you have to think about for skin is GHK copper. Um, and you know, as a transdermal, so GHK copper has huge systemic benefits. Uh, you know, it's, 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 mod, it's, it, it really is an anti-aging peptide in general. It works on about 500 different genes to positively change genetic expression for longevity. It's, it's hugely beneficial for, all, you know, a lot. But we know it's key for wound healing. We also know that it's really protective for sun exposure. So if you use it as a transdermal, so as a face cream, for instance, you get the added benefits of, of you can get systemic effects from it because you're raising GHK copper systemically, but it has an anti-wrinkle effect. It has a skin tightening effect. It has uh, an, an effect to um, to to help help wrinkles and wounds so it's a really like for acne patients things like that or you know scarring you can use ghk copper i use it a lot for wound healing but i use i think it's an underutilized peptide and it's actually if you look in some of the really ex expensive face creams that's what they put it, is copper peptides in but it's in tiny mm -hmm. amount so we can get it in a lot higher amounts a lot higher concentration a lot more bang for your buck and, and just use it i mean i have patients buy just ghk copper you know, bright blue, really strong GHK copper, just add a little bit to their face cream and use that as a face cream. And it's kind of amazing. And it helps with well, hair. So those patients that have the, the hair loss or if they have the little widow's peak where they're losing hair on either side, just apply some of that right to the front. This is where we tend to lose a little bit just here in the front. And uh, it can be helpful for helping with uh, hair growth, regrowth, or at least thickening of the hair follicle. Do you, yeah. when it comes to GHK uh, copper, uh, I know that there was a study done in France years ago that showed by using a dirt roller and perforating the scalp mm -hmm. and applying the GHK copper actually made hair, not only dormant follicles wake up and start growing again, but made pigment come back in a lot of these follicles. That study has never been reproduced. It's kind of like the albatross that everybody chases and hopes, but is the problem that we don't give some of these peptides enough time to actually work. Just the way there are people who program jump uh, and exercise routine. They'll do CrossFit for a week. They don't notice anything. They'll do something else for a week. Uh, do people give peptides enough time to work? Do we have magical thinking? Like, I'm going to just take this from the first dose. I'm going to see benefits. Suzanne is well, smiling. Go ahead, Suzanne. Sometimes you do see benefits quickly. I have a few things that I think work really quickly. Dep it, of course, it all depends on the patient. Everything's very individual dependent. Um, you know, I'll have a good response if I use some of the repair peptides on an injury within a day or two. Um, I'll have a, uh, but sometimes it takes two or three weeks and it really sort of depends on how severe the injury is, how long the injury has been present. Um, I think those those are significant contributors to how effective it is. But typically, it's going to be at least four weeks before in a, in a healthy person before you're going to see any benefits. And especially if you're talking about removing um, uh, facial wrinkles or help restoring hair follicle thickness, it's going to take you probably three months before you see a benefit. Yeah. And I think that's I, I do problem. Think Even so. Carl I, I, I tell patients. Oh, go ahead, Suzanne. I mean, Erica. Yeah, no, I was going to say that I make sure that I manage expectations. And when I start a patient, I tell them, like, let's say CJC APL, right? That we're going to start you and don't expect anything for six weeks, at least, at a minimum, while we're doing everything else, tweaking right. everything. And you know, the interesting thing is somehow it works at six weeks miraculously. And then in some of them, it works with a week. So I don't know, but I think that if you manage expectations, I do the same thing with hormones. I say, you know, it'll take a few weeks. Everybody's fine in about 10 days, five days, and then it's a miracle. So I think that if you manage expectations, you come out with better results. Yeah, I agree. Even when I first started using growth hormone, you know, uh, the, the science showed even in idiopathic short stature that it, it takes weeks and sometimes months to show up. The nice thing about all of these is there seems to be a trajectory of their effects that even when you stop using them, the effects seem to carry on for a little longer mm -hmm. than just when you cease. Uh, have you seen this, Dr. Turner? I see you. You're, you're, you're smiling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they do tend to get. They do tend to get some benefits. It's a little tough, I think, if you take them off. I've had them on a couple of. There's a couple of different uh, growth hormone releasing hormones that they have trouble getting off of, and I don't mean that they have 
problems as a result of it, but they really like how they feel. So they, they don't want to come off of them, but yes, it, they get some additional benefit um, per, afterward. And it's really about how the cells function. It's really about optimizing the way your cells function so that they're choosing uh, to, to choosing to burn fat as a substrate and, and making energy in an appropriate way so that they can function and do what they need to do. Intestinal cells, heart muscle cells, liver cells, everything. 